All right, so take a look at this, guys. Comic Doug Stanhope questions Joe Rogan on Alex Jones and misinformation. Quote, at what point are we responsible? So this is in media. This is interesting. They end up like sort of to one extent or another, they end up debating Alex Jones here. So let's watch and then then we'll talk about it. Alex Fine. Jones started in Austin. We were more popular than him. And he did this cable access thing. Yeah. And then. Are we frozen? What's going on that here? That guy, Charlie, is like, yeah, he's just being a cartoon. He's trying to sell tickets. And then he bought his own bullshit. Well, he's right about enough things <laughs> that it's very confusing. You know, Alex Jones was right about spaghetti Epstein. Spaghetti against the wall. No, 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 no. One no. of those strips no, he, of spaghetti no, is right. No, no, no. He told, no, he's right about more than spaghetti against the That's wall. What on this one, I definitely agree with Stan Hope. Um, yeah, you could point to a handful of things that he got right. Um, because when you talk about conspiracy theories, some percentage of them are just true. Operation Northwoods, the Tuskegee experiments, um, a majority of the country says the JFK assassination, that there's no way it was just one lone gunman, there's no way it was Lee Harvey Oswald. The Epstein thing, there was those memes going around at the time of, like, left winger, right winger, and they shake hands and agree, and, like, Epstein didn't kill himself. So yeah, there's there are conspiracies that are absolutely true. There's also many that are not. In fact, probably the majority of them are not. So to say he's, you know, throwing spaghetti against the wall and he sees what sticks, I think that's exactly what Alex Jones is and what he does. He's clearly defined himself as I am the conspiracy guy. And he's sort of built a business and an empire and a persona, and an ideology around that. And so, yeah, when you get something right, okay, cool, but what about the 417 things you got wrong? And again, the stuff I always come back to with Alex Jones is the stuff, and there's never any accountability for this either. It's just the on a standard, random, like, Wednesday show, the stuff he'll say, like, um, it was either Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama are literal demons. One of them, quote, smells like sulfur, he said. The other one, there was a fly that landed on Obama or something, and he v viewed that as, like, evidence that this guy's the Antichrist or some sort of demon. And it's like, that is genuinely psychotic shit that you would say that. Like, that is out of this world that you would say that. And you can't overlook that stuff because he happened to get some stuff correct over here. Because also, he messes up the mechanics of it as well. You know, like, he... He thinks that it is the smoke-filled back room in every circumstance when it comes to a conspiracy, when oftentimes the conspiracy is not that, it's out in the open. It's out in the open. And what happened to Agenda 21, by the way? Agenda 21 was this thing where they're going to ban golf courses and ban cars and shove us all in Hobbit homes. This is what these guys were talking about circa, like, 2012. And then Agenda 21 is gone, and now everybody's talking about the Great Reset. Well, what happened to Agenda 21? You guys said they were going to do X, Y, and Z, and they didn't do it. They didn't do it. So you can't overlook the 412 things he got wrong because he got seven things right over here. And I do think Joe, and he's friends with Alex, so I understand where the personal side of it comes in, and he's willing to give his friend the benefit of the doubt, but you got to keep it real. The dude is a, is a loose cannon, and he's wrong way more often than he's right. And so Doug Stanhope is generally correct in his view here. It's, it's spaghetti against the wall. Why we know about Operation Northwoods? I'll no, give no, that. no, no. I knew about that beforehand, but he or or in that range. I read it online. But he told me about Bohemian Grove. He told me about Epstein's Island. When he told me about Epstein's Island, I was like, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Where a bunch of like really rich, influential people and politicians and world leaders go to fuck underage girls. I'm like, that's crazy. It's an island. That's crazy. And it turns maybe I'm too online, but. I never, I never thought that was crazy, that story. Ever. Ever. Turns out, rich, powerful people with no accountability, some percentage of them are pedos. And the ones that are, are going to have the power and the authority and the ability to act on that. And so Epstein was the CEO of Elite Sex Crimes Incorporated. So I never thought that was weird. I never thought that was crazy. And, you know... To my knowledge, it wasn't just Alex Jones who was talking about that. There were questions around Epstein in mainstream media for a while. Now, unfortunately, on the TV outlets, they 
they killed that story real quick. And there was that famous clip that leaked that was off air of a woman saying, I had the story and they killed it. So what does that tell you? It tells you the executives, some of them are connected, and then they <laughs> killed that. But in terms of like run-of-the-mill journalists, regular people, they saw it, they thought it was sketchy, they thought it was fishy, and there was truth to it, and people were talking about it. It doesn't be true. I was like, what? And, he, right. go, and he tells me people who told him about it and how he heard about it. Jamie, remember my counterpoint is Joe Francis from Girls Gone Wild. Let's go. Go ahead. No. Uh, you can't connect the two. Like, I, I, I don't know what that means, by the way. What about Joe Francis from Girls Gone Wild? I don't know what that means. No. You, do, Cut if you, it if and you let hung me go. Out, if you hang out with Alex, you would understand. Like, Alex has problems. He's definitely had problems. He had a lot, a lot of alcoholism. But the problem with Alex is he, all day long, he's, he's investigating conspiracies and finding out how many of them are accurate. And it freaks him out. And and he needs someone around him to balance things out. And he doesn't have that. And when he does have that, when Alex talks to people like you or me, if we if Alex Are is we, here on a podcast. Is this cut out? No, this isn't. If we have a good time and Alex was like talking about stuff, you would know that he knows some stuff that is bizarre if true and then turns out to be true. And then you go, what, do you, what, what are you doing? Like how are you? Yeah, no, man. I mean, look. The biggest thing he did, the like career defining thing he did, and not only did he get wrong, he got it egregiously wrong. Of course, I'm talking about the idea that Sandy Hook is a hoax. Now, I would play for you guys. In fact, I was going to for this segment. I would play for you guys everything he said about how Sandy Hook is a hoax. Um, wait, was it Sandy Hook or was it the other one? I think it was Sandy Hook. Yeah, there was, there was a, you know, obviously there's been like a bunch of big mass shootings that happened at schools, but he said it was a hoax. He said these are crisis actors. He said it, like all these things. Um, and he claimed afterwards, oh, I, I never said it was a hoax. I never said they were crisis actors. I never said it was fake and the whole point was to take away the guns. But there was a, a video clip of him from his show back to back to back to back to back to back. I mean, he he was on the beat for shit, at least two or three weeks where every show he would bring it up. And then after the fact, he had the nerve to say, I never said that. Bro, we have the video. I, I've played the video on my show before now. Unfortunately, YouTube banned it. And this is why censorship is wrong. Because even showing it to expose how crazy it is, is treated as if it's just promoting the idea, which makes no sense. That strips everything of its context. It's crazy. Twitter still allows it up. So it is still up on Twitter, but I can't play for you here on YouTube because that video I did covering it was banned. So, but point is, he pushed a narrative that was totally bogus. Crazy people in his audience took his words and then said, well, now I'm going to like harass these families. Some family had to move a bunch of times. Uh, it, did, it created an incredible amount of harm. He was found guilty in court by default because he didn't provide the documents that the court needed to to see for the case. And so now there's a question of how much he's going to end up paying out. But like the biggest thing he covered, not only was he wrong, he was egregiously wrong. And then no ifs, ands, or buts. He lied about it afterwards when he said, I never said those things. Now he might pawn it off to, well, I was going through the throes of addiction and I was on this substance and that substance. So I just forgot. No, he brought it up show after show, after show, after show for minimum weeks, probably months. And then to say, well, I never said that. That's just a lie. That's just a lie. So you can't overlook getting like the biggest thing wrong. By the way, this was the cornerstone of a lot of his um, mass shootings or conspiracy theory arguments is the reason they're doing this is because Barack Obama wants to come and confiscate everybody's guns. Now, when Barack Obama didn't do that and left office, did Alex Jones come out and say, hey, I got those ones wrong. Every time there was a mass shooting... And by the way, he's done this four, five, six, seven times. And I say, they're going to come take your guns. And then they don't take the guns. He never went out there and said, by the way, I got that one wrong. I was incorrect about that. My bad. Oops. He never did that. Because he's not, he's not, the whole thing is not, let me be open, honest, and authentic. Like Joe Rogan's thing is that, agree with him, disagree with him, like him, dislike him, doesn't matter. He is an open, honest, and authentic guy. That's not the game Alex Jones is playing. He's not just some sober-minded individual analyzing conspiracy theories. He's not. He's a guy who has defined himself as, I'm the conspiracy guy. He goes all in on all the conspiracy theories. And truth be damned, 
I mean, again, we're talking about a guy, he was on Rogan's podcast, and he was talking about, like, intergalactic um, communication between aliens and us, or whatever. Like, it, what? Things that require, phenomenal claims that require a phenomenal amount of evidence, and he doesn't have it, and he still pretends like he's obviously right about all of it. So, so my question is, and then I'll finish playing the video, but, like, what percentage of Alex Jones viewers are really watching him because they think he's spitting facts, and what percentage are watching him because it's just, like, performance art and they kind of want to laugh at him? I don't know, but the fact that Rogan seems to give him a little more credit than he deserves is concerning. It is. And look, I'm willing to give credit where it's due. Yeah, when when he was vocal against the Iraq war, that was great. When he was vocal against the illegal NSA spying, that's great. He was right about those things. But being right 26% of the time doesn't make up for whatever the remainder percentage is, 74% of the time, that you're wrong. And the wrongness is actually way more impactful than the rightness. Anyway, let's finish this video up. He, like, all day I study these things. All day I, I investigate these things. And he does. He, he has a lot of like really weird influential people who contact him about weird information about shit that turns out to be fucking accurate. That's terrifying. Powerful people contacting Alex Jones. He says he talks to Trump. I don't know if it's on a regular basis, but every now and then. At, at what point are we responsible for misinformation? That's a good question. Because that's people a very do good question. believe in us. Like, here's I, what they I, need I, to I believe. Don't wanna, I don't want to discount. And I, but, you, but you and I are just talking shit. Yeah. On the on the when are we responsible for misinformation point? That's one where I actually totally disagree with Stanhope because. Who's we? Like, who is we who are responsible for it? No, the people who are responsible for putting out the misinformation or disinformation are the individual agents who are putting out the misinformation and disinformation. I don't blame the social media platforms or the people more broadly. In the same way, I don't blame the telephone company when a mafia don orders a hit and calls his henchman. Is it the fault of Verizon if they're, they have a Verizon plan when they make that phone call? No, it's their fault. So it's Alex Jones' fault when he spreads this stuff. It's not my fault. It's not Twitter's fault. It's not Facebook's fault. It's his fault. So on that point, I disagree because that point is the slipperiest, slippery slope of all time, and it ends in censorship of just standard views you don't like. So on that point, I disagree with Stanhope, but I think he's correct about Alex Jones more generally that he's sort of a mess and he's a broken clock that's right twice a day type stuff. We might be right. We yeah. might not be right. But we're not saying. Look, if you say in order to be a comic— it takes a long time and a lot of work, and it's a, it's a lot of effort. And you got to go on the road. You got to experience different kind of crowds. That's accurate and comes from a place of experience. If you want to start talking about fucking Bohemian Grove, you never been there. I've never been there. We don't know. We're talking shit. If if you want to like take my word at talking shit, that's a problem. If you want to take my word, if we're just discussing something that we saw in the news, like what is happening, what's going on with Roe v. Wade, we don't even know. If that is the case and you want to base your worldview on that, that's not wise. And I would tell people, don't do that. See, Joe, I think what Joe is saying is fair for him. He's a comedian. He comes as advertised. He oftentimes calls himself like an idiot or I'm stupid or I'm a moron. You shouldn't take advice from me, et cetera, et cetera. It's largely true of him. Now, still, at the same time, you know, um, on certain topics, it's better to have voices that are more educated and let them do the speaking, et cetera, et cetera. But I think what he's saying is genuinely true and generally true about himself. He's a comedian. He's talking shit. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. But th that is not true of Alex Jones. Now, I'm not saying you censor Alex Jones or ban Alex Jones or whatever. You guys know I'm deeply against censorship and banning. Um, but he advertises himself as like a truth teller. You know, I'm a guy who's right about everything. I'm a guy who's right about stuff. I'm a guy who's investigated. I have the documents. I know what I'm talking about here. And then he's wrong most of the time. And egregiously wrong. So it is categorically different when you talk about Alex Jones versus Rogan. Rogan is a comedian. He comes as advertised. He's a shit talker. He's funny. It's what he does. Alec Jones is not that. He doesn't portray himself as a comedian, just a regular guy shooting the shit. No, he portrays himself as like an expert and a news guy. And so that is categorically different. Ah! It's like, what is happening? Accidentally What's clicked 10 seconds Roe back. V. Wade? We don't even know. If that is the case and you want to base your worldview on that, that's not wise. And I would tell people, don't do that. But if you want to stop me from talking about all subjects that I'm not 100% informed on, well, that's not going to happen.
So you, we, we're going to have to like come to some sort of an agreement here. And one of the agreements is like, I'm going to be honest with you. And if I know things, I'm going to tell you that I absolutely 100% know things. And if I don't, I go, did you hear this thing? What is this? If you want to say I shouldn't talk about this because I don't have a degree in that or I don't know <laughs> or too many people are listening, that's nonsense. I'm not saying that I'm the fucking end all be all end of information here. Yeah, but again, Alex doesn't do that. Joe will say, look, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I'm not well-versed in this or that. This is just my opinion. It's not really based on anything solid. It's, he'll say that stuff when he's going into a field he's not too sure on most of the time. Um, Alex doesn't do that. There is no humility. <laughs> There's just It's just, you know, bull in a china shop type stuff. So on the broader question, who is Alex Jones? What is Alex Jones? What is he doing? The spaghetti against the wall thing is definitely more accurate from Stanhope on the question of misinformation and when are we responsible for it. I think Rogan is more right than uh, Stanhope that you can't do this whole like collective punishment. Individuals have agency. If they're spreading misinformation or disinformation, that is on them. That's on them. And um, it's not the social media company's fault. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. But anyway, interesting back and forth. They're basically debating Alex Jones. Clearly, Stanhope is not a fan. And clearly, Rogan, since he's friends with Alex Jones, is, you know, inclined to defend him more. It'd be interesting to know what that conversation was like off camera, if it went anywhere else. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.